Hi friends, it's Scott Giro and welcome to another episode of Power Apps Cafe. Thank you ever so much for all of the feedback that I've been getting on this series. It's really encouraging to hear how you're finding it useful. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing and looking at how to add the command bar and to do some navigation with inside our model driven app with our custom page. So stick around. <music> So we're using the creator kit command bar control to add that very familiar kind of list of buttons across the top of your page that you see everywhere else in model driven apps. It's one of those things you don't see in custom pages, really, you don't see in canvas apps. And it's an area that's very close to my heart, obviously, with the ribbon workbench. And I'm going to be doing some videos, more videos on modern commanding, which is how you can create native command buttons using the model driven editor. But using the creator kit command bar, we can create this custom user experience, but with fully configurable buttons inside a canvas app, inside a custom page. So let's dive in and see how that works. Okay, so here we are in the application that we've been working on so far. And there's the links to all of the previous videos in the comments if you want to go and look at those. But we've got an app which has got complex filtering, so we can filter in multiple different types of statuses. But we've also got the ability to filter by industry in the same tag picker, which is really good. And it's fully delegatable, so the sorting is delegatable, as well as the filtering delegatable and the paging is all delegatable. And we have gone through how to check on that using the monitor in the previous uh, videos. What we're going to do is if you look across the top here, we've got these this command bar here and at the moment. It's just showing these question marks, which is not very helpful. So we're going to work on that and add some navigation using that. But also going to add in the command bar, the ability to update the statuses. OK, so if you go into studio here, we, this is where we've left off. The first thing we're going to do is let's go over and look at the command bar in the creator kit and how it works. And this is the reference app. And so you can see that there's there's various different examples here. So I've got the just a very basic example here. So you've just got simple buttons with a, a fly out. This is called a fly out here. But they've also got there's other types of buttons as well. For example, a, a split button. So you can see here that it can be pressed itself as well as it's got a fly out. We're just going to use a fly out and we're going to use the rest of them just going to be standard buttons. The other thing to notice is, is that some of these buttons across the, can be defined as being on the far right and that's a far item button. And you can also force items to be in the overflow here. This is the overflow. But the key thing about this is that the buttons will move into this overflow as the space decreases on the screen. And that's one of the most important things about the command bar is that it will be responsive to the available space. So if we come into the code inside the reference app here, you can see that there's just an inline table here defining these different buttons and I'm going to just grab and copy that and you can always do that that's the purpose of it. it gives you an example of how to use it and I'm just selecting the command bar and we've got at the root level in our responsive container we've got the command bar the filters and the grid and these are just stacked on top of each other and at the moment the command bar is 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 has no items set and if I come into the items here and just paste that in just directly from the example app you can see here immediately that we've got the ability to have this this uh, drop down here we've got the items across the right right the far items and we've got all the different icons being set and if I zoom in then gradually what will happen is that you can see the download has moved into the the overflow there so it's it's all responsive but we need to put in some buttons to be able to do basic navigation that's one of the first things to to achieve here so i'm going to go into my on visible inside my page here we've also we've already got all of this code that we've created to, to create the filtering 
I'm just going to pop this at the top here. So what we're doing here is we're just creating a collection. So rather than passing in a, a set of items that are static inside the items for the command bar, we're going to pass in a dynamic collection that is set up during the on visible. And the reason being is that as well as the standard buttons that we're going to provide here, we're also, we also want to be able to provide some dynamic buttons that are based on the data held in the account statuses table. Because if you remember, we've got this account statuses table, which is data driven and associated via a many to one relationship to the account. So, so you can define multiple different statuses and then each account has one of those statuses. And so what we want to be able to do is show a button for each of those statuses dynamically in our command bar. So if you go and add more statuses, there'll be another button dynamically added. And if you remember that each of the rows in that account statuses table has got an icon and a color as well. So we want to use that data as well to adapt the, the color and the icon of our dropdown. But the basic buttons here are the first thing to notice here is that we've got a standard shape here. And uh, the first the item key here is the most important element because the item key is the the name by which we're going to identify which button has been pressed when you select it because it raises an on select event just much like a standard button but the difference being of course is that we've got many buttons that you could be pressing so the item key is the uh, the, the property that will be reading to determine which of those buttons is being pressed. And the rest of these uh, these properties are defining the style, the, the name, the display name, if it's an icon only. And of course, as we, we saw, some of those buttons can be the far on the far right. So we can define it as an item, as an over, overflow to force it into the into the overflow, or we can we can also define it as being a far right item here. We're just going to respond initially to the on select of these items. So if I go into the on select event of my command bar here, and if we select on select at the top, and we put a little bit of code here, it's very, very standard stuff here. We are going to look at the item key. That's the first thing we're going to do is a switch statement on the item key. And the item key will define the behavior by which we're going to use. So it's, if it's refresh, we're obviously going to refresh the accounts back. We're going to use this back command here, which will navigate to the previous page that we're on. So if we've come from a model-driven form, if we've come from a model-driven view, it's going to go back there. Or indeed, if we come from another custom page, it will go back there. And, and then lastly, we've got this new behavior here. So we navigate to the defaults of the accounts. So now, if you've done a, any patching using to create a new record, you'll be familiar with this kind of terminology that this, this defaults function, because what that does is it creates essentially an empty record. And so by navigating to an empty account record, it tells the model driven app to, to open up a new form. So that's that behavior. But the, the second thing we need to do is we, we want to go and create some, a dynamic list of all the different statuses. So if we go back to our on visible event here and go down underneath these items here, what we're also going to do is add in uh, as to our commands here, a set of status buttons and this is going to be dynamic based on the data that is in this account status table and so that this the shape is very similar to what we had before but if you notice here we are creating an item key which is using the name of the status dynamically and then we're also picking up dynamically the icon and the display color etc the important thing here is that we are defining that this these buttons will be child to this status button because if you come up to the top here we have a status button and this is just has an item key status so each of these buttons is just going to be listed in a flyout underneath that button 
And so now what we had is like this cold command. So I'm just gonna navigate away and then back again to sort of trigger that on visible. And if we now look at this cold commands here, you can see, there we go. We've got all of the different buttons. We've got the standard buttons. And then at the bottom here, we've got all of our dynamic buttons based on the state current statuses we've got in that table. So now I've got that collection. I can just simply go and set rather than that static. We can just change to this dynamic collection. Now, if we run this, you can see here immediately we've got our back new and update status button. And if I drop down on there, we've got all the different icons and the different colors dynamically. And if I go and add another status, count status to the Dataverse table, it would then be listed on, on the end of there. If we did select one of these, we don't want to have the ability to 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 do this without i item being selected at the moment this this data grid is defined as only a single select so i want to be able to firstly mark it as being a multi select not rather than a single so i mark it as multi select and then the 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 thing about the at the moment this collection is that all of the items are enabled so we want to dynamically when we select an item in the table here or unselect an item we want to dynamically change these items here to to reflect that and disable the status update button if there are no items selected so i go and grab this little bit of code here and just pop this in here uh, and all this is doing is it is looking and using count rows of the selected items and so what it's doing is it's just adding this item enabled column, which is one of the properties that the command bar control uses to define if the button is enabled or disabled. And it's saying, well, if the item key is of status, then only enable it if there is more than one item selected. And there's, there's that little bit of code there, the count rows. But for all the other ones, it's always going to be set to be true here. So if we run this, we can now see this behavior. So let's unselect all of these. So the update status now is grayed out because we don't have any items selected. If I select at least one, you can see now it's enabled, which is great. In addition to the uh, navigation that we've added, the, the on select events for the back and the new button, what we want to also do is go and respond to these updates to be the status because we want to have to we want to update all of the items selected to be the status that we selected in that drop down and so i've pasted in this little bit of code here and what this is doing is firstly we're looking at as long as the item key here starts with this with status so we know one of the buttons those status buttons has been pressed we're going to update the context to be busy and we'll use that in a minute and then we're going to run this patch statement here and this is a single patch statement on accounts and it's passing a collection of all the selected items with the status account status set to be the, the account status for that particular button because there is a status column that we defined when we added created that dynamic collection and and so it, each of these items that have been selected will have the account status set to the button a corresponding button status and then the unique id of that account will all also be set so when we pass that collection into the patch it will all be done as in in parallel with with each other if we did for each selected items and then we did an individual patch for each item then that would be done in sequential and that's not necessarily always going to be as performance and then at the end all we do is we just set the a busy flag to be false so that is great. So if I go and let's test this out. So I've selected the, these top two and uh, let's just let's just do these top two here and let's set them to be they're currently hot. Let's set them to be current. So if we wait for the little dots to go across the top, there we go. They've been updated 
to be current, which is great. But we do also want to provide a little more information to the user to, to see what's going on rather than just the dots, dots, the marching ants that appear across the top. And there is already a nice little control which we can use as part of the creator kit, which is the, the spinner control. And it's here we go. It's in preview at the moment, but it's quite a simple control. And it's using the Fluent UI spinner control. And so what I'm going to do is at the root here, I'm going to add in another little container. So inside layout, I'm going to go and grab a simple container. And let's just put it in that in the root screen. And what we'll do is we'll just position it to be zero x zero and, and make it the height as well match the parent height and parent width so it fills up the the entire space of the page because we want to show a, effectively a a blocking piece of visual and i'm going to set the the background of that to be a a nice a sort of like an transparent a transparent background so if we set it to the alpha channel to be 0 0.1, it, it's, it's black with an alpha channel. So it's sort of a transparent black. That's what's filling. So you can see here, it's sort of grayed out the, the application here. And it's blocking because it's sitting in front of all of these other things. So I can't press, I can't actually click on anything underneath it. And then inside this, this container, what I'm going to do, let's make it say, busy, call it container busy. And inside that I'm going to go and add a little spinner. And we'll make it, we go and make make the background color transparent because we don't want it white like that. And then let's make it large. And then let's put a little message here to say, uh, what should we say? Just please wait. And like that. And then we'll position this just in the middle of this container. Now, you know, you could use, I suppose you could use a vertical or horizontal layout. So that, that would work and that would kind of fill it. But now I've gone down this route, I'm going to use parent dot width minus, and we're going to divide that by two. So it's almost in the center, but we just need to set minus self dot width divided by two. And we do the same for the height as well. So parent the height divided by two. So it's almost in the middle there, minus the self dot height divided by two. And that gets it nicely in the middle there. So why is that not working? What's it saying here? Oh, okay, right. I'm creating a circular reference here because I think what I'm doing is I'm setting the, the, the height based on itself. I want to set the height to be a constant. Let's set that to be 200. And I should really, what I intended to do is select Y because all it was trying to do here is it was trying to, there we go. It was trying to set the, the height based on the height, which was causing that circular reference. So there we go there. That's the please wait. But the, if we go to the, this container busy here, then all that remains is to set the visibility to use that busy flag that we had set in our update event as the uh, the tag that the flag that makes it visible. And so now it's gone invisible because we're not doing anything. So we should be able to now select I these items here, change them back to hot. And there we go. It, it's, uh, it put the grayed out blocking uh, with the spinner. And then if I select more items like this and say current, the, does it again so it's kind of giving that nice feeling of something in being in progress as an indicator to the user so the only last thing to do is in addition to the back and new what we want to also do is have the ability to, to select one of these items in this grid and open up that record and that could be either by pressing return using the, the an accessible key or using double click the action with the mouse or touch indeed. So if we come into the properties here, we've got the on change, which we've selected. We've defined already in a previous vi video, which handles the sorting, but we've also got an on select here. So we're very simply going to say navigate to the cell dot selected. 
record. And so when we when the on select event is raised, the self.selected will contain a reference to the record that's been selected and by navigating to it. That tells the model driven app to open up that record, which is pretty cool. So I'll save this now and I'm going to publish it. And then the next thing to do is actually go and add it in to the model driven app and see how it works there. Let's go over into our model driven app here. And we'll, this is just, we've just got the accounts and contacts here. I'm going to go and add in a page. So we select custom and then we can select the, an existing custom page. And this is for nav like that. And so when you firstly add in a page, the app needs to be published. So it's just one of these things that it always will say. And so we won't actually be able to see it here until it's been published, but we're not going to give use the name of the custom page because your custom pages sometimes be maybe a lot more descriptive than the actual name they want to appear in the navigation so we can just simply say you know advanced search here or something like that and we'd use we could just define a custom icon using a web resource if we want and then we'd save this and then we publish it and and let's and then just uh, wait for it to uh, to do its thing and publish and so when you publish it, it will give you this little message across the top here saying we're still publishing part of your app. And so the reason is, is that it needs to go and package up that custom page ready for inclusion in the model driven app. And it does take a little bit of time. And indeed, if you publish a change to your custom page, it does take a little bit of time to, to re reflect in, in your model driven app. So you do have to be a little bit patient here. But eventually, once it's done that, it will refresh the app here. And this is what I love about the model driven app designer here is that it's WYSIWYG. And, and so we can see the actual app, we can see the custom page in action. And not only that, I can go and down the bottom here and define different form factors. So I could say, well, what does this look like on a phone? And so you can see here, it's using that responsive layout that we've created previously to fold all the various different columns into into a single column and then i can go and set it to be desktop or i can set it to be tablet and so it really does make it easy to test and then in responsive mode i can just drag it to it for whatever size i want it to be and so now i've got that i can select any of these items here and i can go and change change them so it updates them there you go, they set them to be cold. And then I also, if I wanted to open up any of these items, I can just double click on it and it opens up. There we go, it opens up the item, which is really cool. And then I use the back button. It takes us back to that custom page. And I can also then use the, the new. So if I click new, that opens up a blank because remember we were using the defaults function. And then if I use the back button inside the custom page, let's say if I go to accounts here, and then I go over to my custom page and then click back. It takes me back to accounts. So the, so the navigation is, is really working. And indeed, if I navigated to another custom page then and use back, it would take me back to the previous custom page. You do have to be aware that, so if I added in a, a filter here, then if I go and open up a record and then go back, the the state has been lost here. So in a future video, I'm going to be showing you how to manage state in a custom page so that when you go back, it will restore the state so the user doesn't have to go and add in their filters again. Well, that's all for today. So we're going to be continuing and looking in some to some more detail. But in the meantime, please let me know in the comments how you get on. And I've got some useful links down in the title of this in the description of this video. Please again, subscribe to my channel. It really does help and encourage me to continue producing this kind of content. And until next time, friends, cheers.